Welcome back, YouTube. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Today we're going to talk about thermal paste. Now, a lot of people think that thermal paste is obvious. They know how to put it on. There's only one way to put it on, and that's it. Well, that's kind of true with current thermal paste, but I've got a lot to say about thermal paste that I thought a lot of people probably don't know. Uh, we're going to check into why some people say to spread it, some people say to put a little dab in the middle. Um, we're also going to talk about different types of thermal paste and what is the best way to apply thermal paste. It's not always the same answer, guys. So check out this video, let me know what you guys think, and let's take a look. <laughs> Now, if you guys don't know what thermal paste is, thermal paste is basically a compound that goes in between the heat spreader on your CPU and the heat sink and fan that is lowered onto your, um, onto your CPU. Now, sometimes it's a water block, you might have some other type of cooling, but generally speaking, whatever it is, you'll usually have a thermal paste. Now, most coolers will come with their own thermal paste, most stock coolers anyway. And, and some aftermarket coolers or third-party coolers will also come with their own thermal paste. Regardless, it's probably better if you go out and get some proper Arctic Silver or some other kind of thermal paste that's a little bit better if you guys are enthusiasts or into that kind of stuff. But there is not always the one way to put on thermal paste. Now, there's different thermal paste. This is what it looks like. Here's a tube of some Fantex stuff that came with my Fantex cooler. Here's some Cooler Master stuff that came with my Cooler Master that I put on just a cheap... I forget what it was. It was one of the it's one of the big time cooler master C, um, CPU coolers. Here's some basic stuff that they have at my work. It's just called silver grease. This stuff's really messy. I don't like this stuff. It gets on everything. Doesn't come off easy. Spreads like crazy. So now most people will tell you that it's wrong to put on thermal paste any other way than putting a small dab in the center. And I'm going to show you guys a link to see what I'm talking about in a minute. That's actually going to show you why this isn't always the right answer. Depending on what type of thermal paste you buy, you're going to put the thermal paste on differently. Most thermal paste, the correct way to put it on these days is to put a small dab in the middle, but some thermal paste is different, and it all depends on what the manufacturer made the paste out of and what the manufacturer tells you to do with the paste. Some paste is better put to be put in a straight line when some of the CPUs underneath the CPU spreader were more linear in a long straight line. Some CPU paste was would bubble if you tried to put it, if you tried to paste it out or you tried to do anything other than put a dab in the middle. Some thermal paste, if you just put a dab in the middle, won't spread out enough. And so you guys got to think about, you know, not all thermal paste is the same. Some thermal paste will spread out to quite a large area. And so putting a little dab in the middle is perfect. That way you don't get any air bubbles, etc. But some thermal paste won't. You'll put a little dab in the middle and it won't spread out. And again, I'll show you this in a minute here. Um, so some thermal paste will actually have different results depending on um, what it was made out of and when it was made. Um, so if the, if the manufacturer tells you to spread it out, you should spread it out. Some thermal paste even comes with like a little nail polish looking type brush that actually unscrews and you can apply to the, to the top of the heat spreader. So whatever the manufacturer tells you to do with that is what you should do. Um, now most Good thermal paste these days, yeah, you just put a little dab in the middle and the weight of the heat sink is enough. I've seen lots of guys who are really advanced in technology not get this wrong and put too too much thermal paste. You know, they think, what 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 could problem could you have by putting more on? Well, if you put too much on, it creates too much of a gap. You're just trying to, and the reason, again, you, you do this is because metal is not, is not flat. Even when they try to make metal really smooth and really flat, it's going to have, if you actually were to look at the top of a heat spreader on a CPU, there'd be gaps where the air and the, the heat can actually um, have different cooling, um, different uh, cool down abilities because there's little grooves in the metal. So what the thermal paste does is it prevents, it, it gives you more of a, of, a, of, a, of a solid contact with the heat spreader to draw away heat more properly from the heat from the CPU because as, as the CPU clocks up, it gets more voltage applied. And that makes it get really hot. So you want you want that heat to easily travel through to the heat to the to the um, heat sink, so that the air from the fans can cool it down and push that air away from it and spread it out properly. Um, so again, um, let's take a look at what I was talking about here. I've got a video that kind of showcases this. As you can see, this one spreads out about there now 
Some other thermal paste will spread out less, some will spread out even more. So look, this is old school Arctic Silver 3. As you can see, this one does not spread out as far. So depending on what type of CPU, because sometimes the actual CPU underneath the heat spreader is actually a small little bit, and that might be fine. But in other cases, that won't be enough at all. So again, depends how long you've been doing tech. Now this is the line method, the silicone type. And again, this I talked about previously because this was important for certain CPUs because the actual CPU on some CPUs, in the case of this Pentium, went more vertical. It was more linear. So you'd actually be covering the entire CPU by doing this, depending on which way you ran the thermal paste. Because it was more of a longer one. Now let's check out Arctic Silver 3 it, using the same method. As you can see, this one might have not been a good choice for this type of CPU. It barely spreads out to where you need it to be. I would still say that's not enough. So this is why it's really important to not just assume that, you know, this is the right way to do it or this is the wrong way to do it. Now here's if somebody had spread it out evenly. Here's what would happen. As you can see, it does cause air bubbles. Twisting it doesn't help at all. Now some thermal paste, if you did it this way, it wouldn't cause air bubbles at all and if you spread it out properly. So that's what I meant by depending on what kind of thermal paste um, you're using and what kind of CPU you have, you're going to be putting on the thermal paste differently. And it's important to take that into consideration when you see other people do things differently because it was different at one point. And that's what I meant by how long you've been doing tech. It really depends how long you've been doing it, what your answer is going to be. You know, if you were out of tech for 10 years, you might still think that it was a good idea to spread it on evenly. So. Let me know what you guys think of that video. If you guys want to see more videos or videos like it, let me know. Like the video if you liked it or dislike it if you disliked it. Let me know what you, I could do better. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys want to see. Later.